Ladies and gentlemen, the 540 is about to conclude its first 10 acres that it has harvested for us, and Timothy has been the driver. He is doing awesome. And soon we will have the weights. I think I've been wrong about my estimates. It's very possible this will be the 10th load behind me here and we're getting 200 a load, it's very possible we hit 190 to 200 bushel an acre. I don't know for sure. I'm not gonna brag, but I am proud of the 540 and the hard work we've done and my son and my daughter are helping. Two rows left, there goes the jackrabbit. His cover has been blown. And this will put the 10 acres in the field and his first 10 acres. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are back on the 540. This is going to be my after action report, if you will. We have been cleaning the unit and preparing it for storage. We took the throat back off because I wanted to get under the cylinder clean and we removed the grain pans. We sandblasted those and we had some very small pinholes. We epoxied those shut and then we primed them and we're gonna put those back in today. Overall, the combine I think performed admirably. There's a few things that we'll pick up again next summer air conditioning being one, and a couple things that I will go over. We had one breakdown, and it only delayed us about 10 minutes. I kind of suspected it would happen. We had this spring break. It is what holds the idler on the unloading belt, and it was broke when we went through the combine, and I heated it all up and reformed a hook here, and I suspected it was probably going to break, but I took a chance because the temperance of the metal would uh, be uh, destroyed from the heating. We had to cut the tip off with a grinder so we could get it going on the other part, get it out of there, and we were able. We came home, went to the parts machine, and someone had put this from a hardware store in, and it had broke. Personally, I think it's a poor design, and I'll show you why. So coming around and looking here is, this is spring-loaded, and there's an idler right there in that slot, and it pivots back here, and it almost instantly scarred my traction drive belt, which I wasn't too happy about when it fell down started burning immediately right on this edge. A little bit of the spring was touching it. And it hooks down to here. Now we were able to jerry-rig this rubber strap in here and finish the combining. We had that going in about 10 minutes after we discovered on the parts machine that it was broke too. The solution is this slot right here 
for a manually adjusted one. And then we can get rid of this piece of steel. No spring, no chance of damaging our traction drive belt. And it works because we know that it works on those machines. And let me show you. Obviously the bracket is not in here, but it would be right here coming off of there. So let me show you the piece. Right here it is. We've already restored this one and it's not tight because we want to slide it, but that's what we've got. That will solve that problem. There is another bracket right there and right there is the slot and I had the fortitude to go ahead, have it in my box, unload idler, rebuilt. This is from the combine in a box that's back over there, but we have it ready to go. So we will put that in the cab and we will start on it next spring. As I said, we have cleaned the unit inside and out. I have been very pleased with the performance with the only the one breakdown. The mystery that I have, and I'm going to explain, or now I'm gonna ask you to help me explain it. I have my suspicions, but we'll tie into it next spring. The mystery that I have, we would start out every morning. We harvested for four days. I didn't record every day because that would get redundant and repetitive. We would start out with a very clean grain tank sample. And everything was working in harmony. As the day progressed, the grain tank sample would get dirtier to the point I even had pieces of cob in it. And I've seen a couple whole cobs, very puzzling to me that it would do that. Every day it did that. In the morning we would start out progressively good with good clean grain tank sample. By the end of the day, they were cruddier than I would like to have seen. Kind of puzzled by that. We had our fan speed was not moving. The first day we discovered that our fan speed would vibrate and crank and become slow. We had it all the way down to fast. We drilled a hole here, welded a little washer here, and we stopped that. The belts were adjusted as we went because every belt on here was new. So every morning we would adjust our belts because of the stretch and breaking in. I do not understand it. I am going to investigate the cleaning shoe in the parts machine to see if we're missing a piece of rubber seal at the front of the sieves. I was suspecting the sieves were bleeding over the front, maybe, going down in front of the fan and into the clean grain tank. I don't know that for sure. I will say that we are putting this into storage and we are pulling the pump. No matter how hard we tried, we could not get the pump to turn the rear beater to 710. The best we got the rear beater to was 695 and we didn't want to wait another week on harvest and have the pump rebuilt. So once this goes into storage, that is the only thing I do, don't touch. I'm going to have the dealership come out and pull the pump. And since I'm doing that, I think I'm going to have the injectors pulled, although it fires up like that. Uh, but I think I'm going to have those tested and pulled and see what they come back like. Because I'd like to have this in tip-top performance. So, the combine 
has been cleaned. We're going to put the pans back in. The, uh, the loss, I did not have a lot of leaking on the combine. I do want to make some sheet metal pieces to seal up this area right here where the cleaning chute blows into the sieves on both sides. And I was puzzled and I'm suspecting, but next spring we'll do it. I'm gonna pull the main grain pan. This area filled up with fine dirt or powder and dust very quickly. I'm suspecting the grain pan is moving it's to the sieve in its shaking pattern and there might be some pinholes in there. Now there was never any corn in there or that would have been a major problem that we would have had to address. So we've got the unit clean. That is my after action report. There's some things next summer I wanna do air conditioning. People in the comments said, oh, I would have done that first and that's fine, you can do what you want. I wanted to make sure the machine ran and I've been in a lot hotter situations, but it did get warm in there. The blower was blowing on us because we were very blessed and fortunate to have 80 degree weather to harvest our corn. Now we were in a drought, really we still are. Today is October 25th, we've had about four inches of rain I think since we've quit harvesting and all the cover crop is planted and there's talking maybe this coming week we'll get some more. So we're not out of the woods yet, but back to the combine. Um, so I'm gonna have the injectors done this winter and the pump, air conditioning. I felt there was a little bit of noise in the power output shaft. I did not replace those bearings. I think I might do that by going in. Uh, you've seen me do it on the 300. It won't be that hard. I won't pull the bell housing off. There will be no need for that like we did on the 300. But I think I'm going to redo those bearings. They just seemed a little growly to me. Other than that, I feel the machine performed wonderful. All the gauge clusters kept working. We have amp gauge, fuel gauge, oil pressure gauge, and temp gauge. So the rewiring did very well. The exhaust held up very well with our new exhaust design. All the machine performed as I expected and with only one breakdown. So I think we were fortunate. I do not have the totals for you on repair parts. Honestly, when you're rolling through it, it's kind of hard to quantify. I'm not trying to keep it from you. I feel that we have, a, I know we have a thousand in the radiator and we probably with belts and everything else say we have another 3000. So that's four, and we're going to have a thousand in the pump and injectors. So we're at five. I safely say we have five thousand dollars in rebuilding this machine, plus our time, which was eighty days, but we didn't work every day of those eighty days. And my sons gained a lot of wealth of experience and knowledge. So. We are gonna put the grain pans back in. The um, rubber piece or tarpaulin piece is in uh, great shape. Let me show that to you. That was one of the first things I checked or we would have had to take these out. Uh, this rubber piece right here, it's a canvas. It's a thick canvas. It even has some staples in it there. I don't know what that's about. Well, we didn't get that worse. There's your part number, but I don't believe it's available anymore. They put staples in to keep it from fraying, it looks like. Uh, this uh, is in excellent shape. I wish we would have got it washed there, but maybe we'll wipe it off. You can have these made at a tarp shop. That is not a problem at all. 
So we're gonna put this back in today, grain pans in. Enough of me babbling on, we won't bring you along. We're gonna put the table elevator back on, or the throat. The poly, I think, performed excellently. Could not tell any change in the feeding or anything like that. But when it was empty, it ran quieter. So I think that did really well. And we'll be adding that to the 300. Uh, definitely, definitely think that if you're going to do anything like we've done, it's well worth the money. I, uh, you can contact me and I can tell you where to buy it. Um, so that concludes the 540 2025 field ready machine, if you will, field ready. We are closer now to field ready when we want to do the next thing will be beans. And I have a very interesting platform for you guys that I picked up in Ohio. It's a 13 foot and believe it or not, it has a hydraulic driven reel. It is, has a very interesting setup. I don't think it's factory. I believe the number is a 9013. Don't quote me on my head numbers, but it can be ran on a 540 because it has a very interesting setup where you don't need to pump like a late model 550 back here to run it. So that's going to be exciting. The next thing we'll be doing is beans in the fall of 26. And we will bring you guys along. Thanks for coming on this journey. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons if you're not a, you have a subscription. And we thank you guys for showing your interest. And we look forward to more fun adventures with the 540. And if we really get going this winter, maybe we'll even have the 300. And maybe we can even talk William into getting the 510 back out of the shed. That would be interesting. We could have us a harvest brigade right here in Trilla, Illinois with the Massey Combines. Thanks for watching.